Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got a problem which I actually shared with some of my students and they actually struggled to solve this. In fact, not one of them managed to solve this entirely correctly. So I want to see if you guys can. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but I didn't think this problem was too challenging. We want to find with proof all the solutions to this set of equations here. So x, y and z are real numbers and x to the 4 plus y to the 4 plus z to the 4 is 3 x to the 5 plus y to the 5 plus z to the 5 is 3 and x to the 6 plus y to the 6 plus z to the 6 is also 3. So pause the video, have a go at this, let me know in the comments and no cheating. I want to see if you guys can solve this entirely correctly. So most of my students managed to find a solution to this equation, uh, perhaps the one that you spotted that is x, y, and z are each one. That definitely solves this system of equations. However, that's not a complete answer here. Either we need to find any other solutions, if there are any, or we need to prove that this is the only solution, if there are no others. And so, well, we have to somehow go about doing that. The way we're gonna do this is just by combining these equations in various ways. First things first, I'm gonna do equation two minus equation one. So subtracting these two from each other, the right hand side is nice and easy, that's 3 minus 3, which is 0. What about x to the 5 minus x to the 4? Well, we can factor out an x to the 4 from that, and we're just going to be left with x minus 1. Then do the same thing with the y, so we get y to the 4 times y minus 1, and same thing with the z's as well, so z to the 4 times z minus 1, so that all equals 0. Lovely. Let's do something similar with equation 3 minus equation 2. Well, x to the 6 minus x to the 5, I can take out an x to the 5 from that and get x minus 1 there. Then y to the 6 minus y to the 5, take out y to the 5. And something similar with z here as well. And that equals 0. OK, so I've just managed to work out two equations here. Where can I go from here? Well, what I can do is label this equation 4 and this equation here I can label 5. And again, I'm going to do equation 5 minus equation 4. So I'll do that over here. But before I do that, let's think about how we're going to simplify this. Because I've got x to the 5 times x minus 1 minus x to the 4 times x minus 1. So let me just write that here. And how can I simplify this? Well, I can take out an x to the 4. And I can also take out an x minus 1. And I'm left with x from this first term. And then just minus 1 from the second term, and so that's just x to the 4 times x minus 1 squared. So all in all, this just becomes x to the 4 times x minus 1 squared, plus y to the 4 times y minus 1 squared, because it's the exact same thing for y's, and then plus z to the 4 times z minus 1 squared. And this equals 0 minus 0, which is still 0. Okie dokie. Now maybe you can spot what happens here. This term here is non-negative because it's uh, x to the 4 is non-negative and so is x minus 1 squared. So this is at least 0. Same thing here, this is at least 0. And same thing here, this is at least 0. However, I'm adding up three non-negative terms and the answer here is 0. How is this possible? Well, the only way this is possible is if each of them are 0. So that means that this first guy is 0, so that means that either x is 0 or x is 1. Same thing here, so we get that y is 0 or y is 1. And same thing here, z is 0 or z is 1. However, if we just look at this first equation here, for example, we can see that when we add these three up, they have to add up to 3. And just hopefully just a bit of staring at this, you can see that neither x nor y nor z can be 0. They must all be 1 in order to attain this. And so therefore we get x is y is z is 1. And that is our only solution to this equation. So although it seemed like x is y is z is 1 was a solution, I mean, it, it certainly is a solution, that's pretty obvious. To prove that it is requires a little bit more work, but actually nothing too demanding here. It is just a matter of combining these equations in a very smart way and arriving at something which you know is non-negative showing it's equal to zero and thus from that deducing that x, y and z must each be one. I hope this solution has made sense. I want to see maybe there's another way to solve this. I, I mean this is my most you know the most intuitive way I thought to go about this 
uh, but let me know if there's something I can do to improve this method. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please do give it a like, and if you're new to the channel, please do consider subscribing as well. It's a really uh, easy way for you uh, to help support the channel. It's totally free, and I mean, if later down the line you want to unsubscribe, that's absolutely fine as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.